Hello, and welcome to another Do As We Do Live, where we know that being unprepared is a caregiver's worst enemy. And we believe starting the conversation with your family early is the best way to go about being prepared. Um, we are on a mission here to break that chain of unprepared caregiver cycle because we want to remind you that it's not about if you die, but it's about if you live. So I am that Kimberly along with my co-host. Say hi, Brian. Hello. Brian Crawford is here with me today and we have another great guest to chat with today. And before we jump into that, we want to acknowledge everybody and where we're tuning in from uh, do as we do Facebook page, the do as we do YouTube. And of course uh, my personal LinkedIn, and we haven't figured out how to link this up to Instagram yet, but we're working on it. So please bear with us. Um, but if you do have questions, we uh, please leave them in the comments. Um, we will get to them live or afterwards. And of course, uh, please make sure you hit that like, share, subscribe uh, button while you're there. And also, last but not least, if you know somebody that is becoming a caregiver or already is a caregiver and needs um, a needs the community needs this information, please share this episode with them because we know that it takes a village. So um, before we jump into our topic with um, the author and founder of Day by uh, Dementia by Day, <laughs> uh, Rachel Wonderlin, I'm gonna let uh, Brian uh, talk to y'all a little bit about um, what exactly is a caregiver. Right. So remember our definition of a caregiver, someone who regularly assists with a loved one's daily activities. And that can be because of, of old age, disability, uh, disease or mental disorder. Um, so according to the National Alliance for Caregiving and AARP, each day there are over 43 million people that are providing care for a loved one, i.e. being a caregiver. The problem is that in many cases, caregivers are untrained untrained, unpaid, unprepared, and obviously uncertain about what comes next. This life phase may also have come about unexpectedly. And I would say that that happens the majority of the time. So in Kimberly's case, <laughs> she's also been called on to give care from a distance, which is another level of a challenge. All combined, um, this can be very overwhelming at any stage to be a caregiver. So for those reasons, we've launched the Do As We Do Foundation because we believe that caregivers and their loved ones uh, both the deserve to live happily and confidently. And our mission is to provide valuable content and guidance to help caregivers become better prepared, build a support community to empower caregivers to find the resources they need, and also grow a monetary fund uh, to provide financial assistance for caregivers. And we have some big news about that coming up. So Kimberly, why don't you tell us a little bit more about that fund? So the Caregiver Relief Fund um, was created uh, in the beginning around helping caregivers make sure they stay in their homes, you know, whether it's a mortgage or rent. We have pivoted a little bit and added medicines, groceries. Um, we have an application online for people to fill out, um, but we have been raising money with the Caregiver Relief Fund, and I'll put the link um, in the comments so you know where you can donate, where we're, we're able to help raise money for caregivers who might need a little extra help during this time. I always tell people that we didn't start this because of COVID and we'll be around after COVID. It was just kind of a coincidence. But we know now more than ever, caregivers need that additional support, whether it's emotional, it's um, a community of people to lean on or a financial assistance. So if you go to doaswedo.org, you can donate there or you can also, and you can also apply. We have a thanks to Approved Shield and Spherix, some of our amazing um, partners and sponsors. They have put together a secure application, and that's where you can go to do either apply or donate. We would love any little bit helps. Um, we are have a tally up to Sam's going to be upset with me because I should know this number. <laughs> 
but we have got, I believe it's at $4,500. Um, so we're very excited about that. And we'll also fill you in at the end of the show a little bit about what we're doing um, for a streamathon in, in a couple of weeks. But before I do that, um, Kimberly, you want me to introduce our guest? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So now we are very excited to introduce our guest for you today. She is the author of When Someone You Know is Living in a Dementia Care Community and also Creative Engagement, a handbook of activities for people with dementia. And she also runs the Dementia by Day podcast. And uh, I believe currently in the middle of season three, two. Two, three. You got it. Two, three. Got it. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Rachel Wonderland. And thank you so much for coming on with us today. Thanks yes. for having me. Yes, Rachel. We really, really appreciate you so much. So, give the audience a little um, context background about who you are and where you're from and all that great stuff. Sure. So, I live in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, but I work all over the country from right here. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, I uh, started my company in 2016, although I actually started my Dementia by Day blog in 2014. So I've actually been doing writing on dementia care since 2014. Um, when I first started in the field, I was at a Brookdale community. I was a dementia care director. And uh, that's when I started the blog, which turned into the book. Um, so finally, in 2016, I'd been working in, I worked in three different dementia care communities and I ended up getting laid off. And I was like, I don't want to work for anybody else anymore. I want to start my own thing. I know I can do this. And uh, that's how I got to where I am. Awesome. Right now. Rachel, um, was there something that uh, you said you've worked in dementia, in the dementia yeah. care field? Yeah. What was it that kind of pushed you in that direction? Um, I have just always loved working with older adults. Um, my grandmother had a glioblastoma, which is a type of brain tumor. So, I mean, you could, I guess, call that a form of, uh, dementia if you wanted to argue in that direction, but it's not really because of any one person. It's just because I love working with older people and, uh, I love medicine and neurology. So you kind of combine all those things and, mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> and you also saw a need. Uh, yeah. because a lot of your the content you put out is around making things different for the caregiver and teaching yeah. the caregiver how to treat people differently, like in your podcast, Timeline Confusion, yep. um, you know, when it comes to dementia patients. What what do you um, what can you share with us along those lines? Why? Why? Or what did you see that and, and what what are you saying is changing needs to change? Um, we've been teaching the same old, you know, validate, redirect, distract thing for the last how many years. Um, I don't really think it totally gets the job done. Um, I think it's kind of incomplete. So when I'm teaching embracing their reality, which means like, how do we really get into the world of the person living with dementia? Stop worrying about the word lying and really just focus on doing what's true for them. That's surprisingly a pretty novel concept in the dementia care world. So I'm really bringing something <laughs> different to the table mm -hmm. uh, there. And so I think uh, the more people I can kind of get onto my farm, um, the better. Yeah. <laughs> so give us give us a little bit of example of that kind of the, the mindset shift that you're talking about um, in not necessarily the lying part, but give us a sense of what that conversation may look like from a, if I'm um, a caregiver and one of my family members has dementia, what, what might that be? Um, do you mean if the family's not really sure how to communicate with that person? Is that what you mean? Right, and, and dealing with kind of the timeline confusion that, that you had talked about in your podcast a little bit. I'm okay, kind of so timeline, yeah, so timeline confusion essentially uh, means that a person living with dementia may not live on the same timeline that we do, the same linear timeline. So instead of saying, no, mom, you know, it's 2020 and, um, you know, you this is where you live now and blah, blah, blah. We're going to um, go along with whatever reality she's presenting and not try to bring her over to our world. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's it's definitely something I see more and more now. My mom's going on her eighth or ninth year. And when you and I first spoke two mm -hmm. years ago, yeah, um, that, you know, I, I really was like, yeah, that redirect, that's the way to go. I do embrace her reality. Um, I have gotten used to repeating myself. There's still some people who in my family have a hard time with that. Um, yeah. and, and I know on some days it's harder for me that when I'm having a bad caregiving day and when I'm, when I'm, my cup is not full, I definitely have a harder time repeating myself and I just retreat and, and almost ignore. And then I, I lie, a red, you know, or redirect or just give in. I mean, there's so many different, it depends where my headspace is. Yeah. And I didn't even realize that until about a year ago. That it, that it really like I can see the shift right when I do it I can see the shift in our moods I can yeah. see her shift my shift and you know but embracing her reality and 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 she's coming to live with me soon so just telling her that over and over again so like so that she will get used to it in the beginning I thought maybe I should lie to her about it but I so didn't want to freak her out when you say lie what do you mean just um like she's gonna be on a permanent vacation right like she's gonna come visit me and and I was, I'm moving everything in her room exactly the way it is. And it's mm -hmm. going to be set up exactly the way it is at her home with me. Um, but I wasn't going to tell her about the house being sold. You know, I don't, think, I don't like think you should tell her that the house yeah. is being sold. Well, <laughs> I decided that it was a better idea because she's still living in it here. And, you know, we come back and forth. So it's really okay. hard for her not to see the pictures on the wall, you know, because okay. when she was diagnosed, I wanted her to remember as much stuff. And whenever she could see people, she remembers, right? And um, so, because she had short term. So anybody within the last four or five years, sure. it was a harder time, right? So sure. that's something that I found to, th that it was better for me not to do, you know, cause I thought about it, you know, um, it, it still might happen. I'm, I mean, we haven't sold the house yet, but you know, I just repeat it. You're gonna come and live with me, You're, you know, you you're going to come with me rent. And she's, she slowly, she hasn't really, she didn't like it in the beginning, but she's, Oh, at least I have somebody, you know, that wants me, you know, and things like that. So that's good. And I feel that, but then on some days that are bad, I might do the things that you're teaching people not to do is what I'm saying. I'm going to be the first to say that it sometimes it can be hard. So, right? so on days where you feel like it's hard, what do you say instead? Like, um, whatever makes her feel better. <laughs> because that is what I'm telling people to do. I, I actually say, you know, when people hear the word lie, I'm saying, don't worry about lying. Actually embrace what's mm -hmm. true for her. So I'd actually prefer you said something like, oh, yeah, you know, you can go back home eventually. Because trying to con trying to make her remember something is not is kind of probably, honestly, more work for you. And it's not going to stick, at yeah, least yeah. not permanently. Yeah. So I'm actually saying yeah, when you're embracing someone's reality, you're doing what's true for them. You're not really actually doing what's true for you. And um, I hate the word lying because it makes people feel bad. Um, oh, but yeah. really like, you know, if I always give the example of like, if someone's hallucinating, someone sees the buildings on fire. We're not gonna sit there and go, oh, don't worry, there's no fire. What you're seeing is not real. We, we don't wanna do that. Yeah. We wanna <laughs> go, okay, I'm gonna call the fire department and I'm gonna take care of this, you know? Um, but that's hard for a lot of people because they're like, well, I just, want, I don't want to lie. Right. And it's like, it's not lying. You're, you're doing what's true for, for this person. And mm -hmm. it's going to be a lot easier for everybody. Uh, if we see the fire <laughs> and don't yeah. just like go, Oh, sounds like, you know, what we do with redirection, like, sounds like you're afraid of fire. And it's like, duh, you know, who's not afraid of fire. Right. Yeah, I yeah. mean, this isn't a therapy session. We're yeah. like, we're just trying to deal with the acute problem, which is like, someone who's anything. Yeah. 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 No, for sure. And, and I, I do watch my language. So, you know, I, 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 but I know what you're talking about as far as yeah. the line, like it does feel in the beginning bad. like I did feel bad. Um, yeah. But sure. my, my redirect was totally a different subject. Like I was like mm -hmm. skipping over things, you know, I, but I definitely have embraced that her reality thing because it is true. It's that's the only way to help me keep my sanity as well. I feel I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Brian, do you think I'm still saying after the last year? <laughs> so. You're holding it together. Well, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah I, I'm Kimberly. I, I know. I think the terminology that you usually say is you, you like to meet your mom where she is, yeah. which I think can kind of uh, 
coincide with what what Rachel means by embrace the reality mm -hmm. of yep. very similar things. So I it, just based on what you've kind of talked about here and, and then after listening to your podcast a little bit, I, I think that that the language that we use when talking to a, a dementia patient is is very important. And, you know, that mm -hmm. that can quickly become confusing. So how do we how do we get our minds wrapped around what we should be saying and and kind of moving back and forth between reality and mm -hmm. their reality? Yeah, I always like to tell caregivers to use um, three different questions to find out where someone's reality is. And the first one being, uh, if someone's saying to you, where's my mom? All right. We know this person's mother has passed away, but saying your mom died years ago, remember, is not uh, a good plan. Um, and usually something like, let's go over here and do this instead, isn't really you're not answering their question. So I teach caregivers to actually say, where do you think she is? And then do that, you know? So if they say, oh, I think she passed away. Yep. Oh, I think she's at the store. Yeah. Oh, I think she's at work. Oh, okay. You know, we're just going like, yeah, all right. And so and that's hard for people at first because they right. go, well, I don't want to, uh, it's like, you're all you're doing is you're asking somebody and then agreeing with them um, right. kind of sets, sets you up for success and it sets up, sets them up for success and you don't have to come up with anything. You know, you don't have to be like, well, I think, um, and take a guess where their reality is. Like this way you're just going, where's your reality? Okay. Got it. That's where we are yeah. too. That's where I am. Right. We're all there. Yeah. So yeah. if we, if we don't do that, like if, if, if the question is, you know, where's mom and mm -hmm. kind of the setup of what you were saying, yeah. you know, that they passed away years ago if if i said well you know they're they died um on whatever date in, in 2008 mm -hmm. does that you know potentially cause her or him to 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 kind of go start the grief process again like is it just is it shock potentially yeah potentially yeah for sure i mean like i've had people <laughs> like i i watched one time this is years ago but some staff member said to one of my residents, oh yeah, your parents died years ago. And my resident said to me, where have I been this whole time? What, what did I miss their funeral? Like then she's going back and thinking, well, what the hell have I been doing for the last, you know, like 20 years, right? Um, okay. So yeah, I mean, and then I've had people tell me, well, when I remind my mom, you know, of X, Y, and Z, she remembers. And it's like, yeah, uh-huh for how long and like at, to what end like you know my question is like okay but why are we trying to do this like why are we trying to get somebody to remember a thing like for what purpose and i think a lot of times it's caregivers they want they want to feel better so they're like i'm just going to tell i'm going to keep reminding them of this fact and it's mm -hmm. like eh you know why so that you can feel like you told the truth like that truth is not making anybody's day any easier. Yeah. I, I find myself when she, she doesn't ask if she just started that process yeah. of, mm -hmm. uh, you know, she asked me once, what, was I around when my grandfather passed away, which I was, he yeah. only passed away eight years ago. And that was one of the things that set her into that, that stress set her into this. Um, but um, when she says it, I say, yes, mom. And then I just, you know, and then she bring, you know, she has asked if my grandmother is gone and my grandmother's not, she's 93. So she's still alive. Well, that's, so good. Yeah, that's easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That one's easy, but it just, it is, but when she had just seen her, right. So those things kind of bother me a little bit. Um, and that's the, her picture, the have not having her pictures, I feel has, has really, since we started to try and re, you know, fix up the house to get it sold that we've moved, removed pictures. And that's kind of what's started that process because she doesn't see these, these images every single day, like she used to. And so that I, you know, I don't, I haven't lied to her and her perception. I mean, I wait for her to answer and then I just, sure. you know, but it's, it's hard. That's a very hard thing when they start doing that for me. It's, or, it's then. possible that the pictures have nothing to do with it. And okay. it's possible that she's, it's just coincidental that she's progressing. At some point, I venture to guess that looking at the pictures would actually be a little more confusing 
families sometimes make the mistake of pulling out a photo album and being like, who's this? Do you remember who oh, this yeah. is? Um, and yeah. So I don't, I don't think that you putting photos in the room or not putting photos in the room is, is causing uh, mm -hmm. anything. It's probably coincidental. So I wouldn't yeah. really, you know, stress about, I wouldn't really yeah. stress about, about and that. I don't ask those questions. I don't ask. Right, right, who right. Yeah. Who's Somebody this? else in the family might, but I, I don't do that. I just. Right, right. Does yeah, that become right. sort of problematic um, if, if um, you know, Kimberly, like if your mom or, or any other dementia patient, you know, doesn't remember family or, a, you know, particular member of the family? Um, it's, so that's what I call time. That's what I'm talking about with timeline confusion is like just because they don't um, can't place somebody on the, on their timeline doesn't mean they don't love that person. It just means, you know, that they're probably picturing that person as a much younger adult than they actually are, you know? So if mom thinks that she's 55 and in, you come in and you're 55, she's like, wait a minute, who's this? Right. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's just what that is. And so I've seen that happen a lot with caregivers who are, who are you know, um, 50 or older and they're coming in like wait a minute mom thought i was her mom or mom thought i was her dad mm -hmm. you know and they're offended by it they're upset and i'm like it's it they, they love you they just can't figure yeah. out why you're old you know like they're anticipating a 16 year old person and you're walking in oh, yeah. as a full-grown adult um or even yeah, during COVID, my niece was helping out and she's in college. She's 21. Yeah. Right. And that's mm -hmm. that's her, we used to joke that that was the favorite grandchild. And and during COVID, she thought my she had not seen my niece all woman like, right? In a, in a long time since she graduated from high school. Yeah. And she thought that she was the caregiver coming in, you know, yeah. and calling yeah. her either Sandra or asking her what her name was. And and my niece was very patient. She was like, Grandma, it's it's Sam. It's you know, and, you know. You know, but then she looks at my nephew who looks exactly like my brother and mm -hmm. knows that's him. Right. So I don't know what the two distinctions are, but yeah, yeah I would say, kind of you know, we never want to correct anybody. Okay. So I encourage families not to walk in and be like, mom, it's me. Like if they don't have trouble yeah. placing you, but instead to just be like, OK, yeah, to, to say the name, you know, okay. like, oh, yeah, I'm Rachel. Oh, Rachel's my granddaughter's name. Great. Right. Because saying like grandma, it's me is actually yeah. potentially really jarring for someone who mm. is on a different timeline. Cause then I'm thinking, wait a second, how did you, what do you mean? Like yeah. you're 15 years old. How are you, how are you now looking like an adult? Right. So I really encourage mm. people to, to avoid any sort of correcting. Okay. Um, it's, it's tempting and mo I've watched people do it, but it usually doesn't, doesn't fix anything and it doesn't usually end well, I guess, you know, yeah. but it's hard for, it's hard for, for families because the immediate reaction is like, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to tell you who I am. And it's like, mm, yeah. or not. Uh, not a bad idea. Right? Yeah. Okay. Not, not big, but yeah, I'll be sure. I mean, she's at, at the holidays will be the next time that she sees her, but she didn't mm -hmm. take it personally. Right. Like, and she's just doing whatever, you know, there were some funny moments during COVID yeah. With her being in school, being, you know, on her computer and, you know, but she, she just rolled with it. She did it. They both did a very good job, you know, at the age of 18 and, you know, 20, seeing the grandmother that raised them, you know, that helped with them when they were young. Yeah. So that was different for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Rachel, um, I know that you've kind of built some education around dementia care. And that's uh, kind of one of the projects that you're you're working on right now. Um, mm -hmm. Would you mind talking a little bit, uh, you know, to our audience about, you know, maybe what you saw in the field and then kind of how you built that curriculum for for caregivers? Um, yeah. You know, with what, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, people think a lot of times like that they have to be like dementia certified and there's like some board of education that does it. And there's really not, um, there's no overarching national body of dementia education. There's something called national council of dementia sort of whatever, but they, she just has a great trademark name. That's actually not, yeah. Like any, you can provide the education. So I built an online uh, education program. It's five hours of really fun, interactive dementia oh. education for staff. So um, a company like a seat, like a, 
a larger company buys it and then their individual staff members can log in and go through it. So it's uh, pretty much everything you would need to know about dementia packed into that course. Um, Cause I wasn't really seeing anything in the market for it. I mean, like, yes, there's Relias and they have dementia training. Um, I think mine's more fun. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, you yeah. want to keep them, you want to keep them engaged and, and you, yeah. and the old way we did things, I mean, and that's that. That's why this nonprofit came about because I wanted people not to put this in a closet and not, and for our my niece and my nephew not to have to go through this. I want to gauge them to in, and encourage them, and Brian's niece and nephew, you know, nieces, like right. everybody, push on their, you know, family to talk and have this conversation now instead right. of waiting when you're in the throes of it or when they get. Yeah. you know, a diagnosis and you're like, WTF, what am I supposed to do? Right? Like, you know, I, I wish I think back when my mom was diagnosed and I wish I would not have just automatically got her medication. I wish I would have taken on her trip. Cause I realized like you say it too, dement, it's not Alzheimer's, like dementia is a symptom. Right. And she, she could have been stressed. And I wish I would have taken her on a, on a, on a vacation that maybe that would have made that short-term dementia go away, right? Or, or be a little bit better instead of just automatically giving her medication because we didn't go to a neurologist. So the old way of thinking is not not what we should be doing to move forward, right? Yeah. Also, so Rachel, is, is just the, is the number one cause of dementia, but there are over a hundred different causes of, of dementia. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, Alzheimer's disease is dementia, but dementia, like not all dementias are Alzheimer's disease, but people tend to think like Alzheimer's is the worst. And it's, um, I would actually venture to say that um, frontotemporal diseases are probably a little more challenging to deal with, um, or maybe even a Lewy body disease is, is more challenging to deal with than Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's just gets all the attention. Yeah, uh, the research yeah. dollars. We, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, it's kind of like breast cancer, right? Yeah. Like with that, like um, they get a lot of research dollars, which is, you know, great. But, yeah. um, you know, brain cancer is far more fatal than, um, mm -hmm. you know, breast cancer. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Brian, were you saying something? Yeah, I was wondering where we could find that that uh, educational program, Rachel. Yeah, yeah. it's on uh, DementiaByDaySchool.com. Say it again. <laughs> DementiaByDaySchool.com. Perfect. Yeah, I have a little. Well, tell us what else are you, what else are you are you working on besides, I mean, you've had that course out and what else so is stuff. going on? Uh, <laughs> uh, my audio book just came out today. So you can go to Audible or iTunes and buy that. I encourage you to do it. I'm trying to... Um, get people to get it in these first couple of weeks. And if you buy it before October 31st, I'm giving away a audiobook companion guide to everybody who, who buys it. So um, that's pretty fun. So if you get it before the 31st, you'll get an audiobook companion guide that I made to kind of like go along with it. Um, mm -hmm. So that's out. I was just on somebody else's podcast recently. I, I, yeah, I don't know, a lot of things. <laughs> a lot of things, a lot of content. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Making a lot of changes for, for the caregiving world. I'm for trying. It's, yes. so I actually just hired, I actually just hired my first uh, part-time person. So oh. I have uh, now like a PR marketing uh, manager who's going to be helping me out because I have nice. just like a lot. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you're a very busy woman. We really, we truly appreciate you visiting with us. Yeah. I, like it's, it was something that I was very excited when you said yes. We, you know, we we know that there has to be a different way, you know, in in a tackling this, especially with more and more people. Yep. All our volunteers, like Brian, they have parents that are coming as age. They hear from me about preaching to them. Talk to your parents now, because it's not about when they die. It's about how much longer they're going right. to live. And are you going to be able to help them? Are they going to let you help them? And if not, go get training from someone like you who's putting yep. or go get counseling from, some, you know, because a lot of people that we've interviewed, you help with the families because it can cause, cause a divide that yep. nobody wants. Right. Like you, you're you not set. It just happens, unfortunately, especially when there's no communication and there, nobody's prepared. So, right. It definitely so Can we really, you, yes, go ahead. I'm Rachel's newest customer. I just bought <laughs> yeah. your audiobook before we came Yay. on the show today. 
Very get excited. My I love audiobooks. Guide. Get my audiobook companion guide. There's a link on if you go if you get my emails too, you'll you'll see it. There's a there's a link I can and I can email it to you. But you can and download. You have a creative, that. don't you have a like something that like it has to do with like like I don't want to say arts and crafts, but it was one of your first ones or was a handbook? I saw it. Second. One. Creative engagement. Huh? Yes, yes, I believe. Yeah, right. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. Okay. yes. Yeah, the second book. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> My first book is the audio. My first book is the one that came out in audiobook form. Okay, got it. Okay. Well, awesome. Well, um, Brian, do you have any more questions for our guests before we wrap up? I do. And it's where can our guests find you online other than uh, buying your audiobook? Everywhere. Oh, okay. Um uh yeah. Google me. Uh, all those places. If you go to rachelwonderland.com, you'll find me. You'll be honestly just like go on Google and type in my name. There's like a whole <laughs> bunch of stuff. I'm on YouTube. I just did a video um, earlier today. So new video is up there on my VR headset. Um, Jim Gleason and Mind VR sent me a VR headset to try out. So there's a review video on there. Um, Instagram. I've got a fun Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest. My blog, the podcast, the book. Awesome. You're Let's everywhere. <laughs> Too well, many we, things. We appreciate you um, joining us today, and uh, you're always welcome back with uh, of your your new um, ideas. Uh, we, like you said, you're you're making a difference, doing things differently. We believe in that. We want people to be prepared, um, not just in the facilities, but also at home if they can't send them. People can't go to a facility. You have some one-on-one -on -one material on your website and noticed as oh, well. Yeah. I feel it would be, I found very, I'm, I'm like, okay, I'll come back to this because I need to, I don't want to get down a wormhole, but it's definitely, the more we know to prepare, the better we are, period. Totally. So. We appreciate the work you're doing, yes. Rachel. Thanks. Yes. Yeah, thanks for having me. This was fun. Awesome. Well, have a great one. We appreciate it. Well, okay, do you guys. want to take the wrap up, Brian? Sure. All right. Um, as always, if you got any value out of today's show and what Rachel had to say, mm -hmm. um, you know, go support Rachel. Download her audio book. I obviously I just talked about that. I did it. Um, I believe she's got a great program. Um, ed any education is is good. Knowledge is is power. Obviously, yes, so. Sir. Um, please share this show with anybody that you might know that that could get use or value out of today. Um, we are going to continue our mission um, and track down valuable content like this and many other guests uh, for other meaningful topics to our caregivers. As a reminder, we're, we are building a support community to empower our caregivers to find the resources that they, they need to thrive. So. Lastly, we are continuing to raise money for our Caregivers Relief Fund, and we are beginning to distribute those funds to caregivers who need help right now. There are caregivers um, that that absolutely could could use a pick me up. Reach out, lend a hand to someone who uh, who is caring for someone else, just out of the goodness of your heart. Uh, we we do have funds available right now for those who need assistance. And you can donate and find our Fundly page at doaswedo.org. Yes. And we don't want to forget our beautiful sponsors. I'm going to remove Brian and I's space for a second. Um, I'm a soap addict, Salon D, Approved Shields, Spherex, um, Hustle Aesthetics, uh, Short Productions, Rich B, Blue Jay, and AK Realty. We appreciate, we appreciate them so much. Um, I will definitely be putting the funding link in, but like Brian said, you can go to um, doaswedo.org um, to donate or apply for assistance. Um, and streamathon. Yes, the streamathon. I did upload that. I can't screen share, but let me see if this will happen correctly. Hold on. We have a streamathon October the 29th. People, up. Oh, look, look at. I'm going to remove my remove me. Maybe not. Uh oh. See? Oh well. Then I'm messing that up. But there's a streamathon. That I want to get rid of that. There we go. Brian's gonna point to it. <laughs> it's um October the 29th. 
Um, you do have to dress up if you would like to be on it. We still have available spots. We have um, a, a couple of guests coming on. It's just in little increments. We're going to have a good time. The, all the volunteers will be on as well as, um, and we, we want to build awareness. We're also um, raising money. We are excited to have a donor that will be matching. So yes, it's a costume and pumpkin carving, a virtual uh, streamathon. So go check out our Facebook page to get more details. You can email me, the email address is right there if you'd like to be a part of that. And what else am I missing, Brian? Am I missing anything else? don't think so no but like we said um it's not about if you die it's about if you live and we know it does definitely take a village to do this to care for a loved one or for someone in need uh, so get that education get the community going get those resources with it from Rachel or one of our many other guests that we've had on. Um, next week, we will have a financial advisor. We're very excited about that. So um, if I haven't forgot anything until next Thursday, remember, do as we do. Thank you all. Bye. See you, Thanks, Brian. Rachel. Thanks, guys. Bye.